Thank you for watching. This is Mr. Anderson for Keller Community College and we're going to be using um, some problems here to demonstrate taking the half angle formula and finding the exact value of each expression. Now one of the benefits of having half angle and double angle formulas is we can actually find exact values for things that aren't normally um, exactly on the unit circle. So for here we have the cosine of 22.5 degrees which is not on the unit circle. But if I um, take this angle and double it, I will get to a number that will be on the unit circle, such as 45 degrees. Now, the first thing I want to do is, if in, in any of these problems, if this is ever given to me in radians, I want to turn that into degrees. And this one's already in degrees, so we don't have to do any work there. Also, if there's any degree measurements that are um, bigger than 360 degrees or negative rotations, um, I'll turn those into their uh, complements um, between 0 and 2 pi or 0 and 360 degrees. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm first of all going to look at this angle and I am firmly in the first quadrant. And the reason why I state and indicate that I am in the first quadrant is because I'm going to need that later because the half angle formula for sine and cosine involve using um, a plus or minus, which we have to determine based on where we are on the unit circle. So um, considering I'm at 22.5 degrees, um, I'm in the first quadrant, so I'm going to change this problem into an equivalent expression of cosine of 45 degrees divided by 2. So now what I have is I have an expression where 45 degrees cut in half will give me the original expression, which means that I can use a half angle formula, and that half angle formula is going to be um, for cosine, so the cosine of alpha over 2, and this is a review of a previous video, is plus or minus the square root of 1 plus cosine of theta divided by 2. Now, in this case, um, since uh, my theta is above the 2 here, I just need to go look up cosine of 45 degrees. But I do need to choose whether I'm going to be positive or negative, and I'm going to choose positive because I'm in the first quadrant. So let me rewrite the problem now. So I've got the square root. Notice I leave off the plus or the minus since it's positive. 1 plus the cosine of 45 degrees is going to be 1 half, oops, sorry, square root of 2 over 2, I misspoke there, divided by 2. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get common denominators in my numerator by turning that 1 into 2 over 2 plus square root of 2 over 2 and the whole thing is divided by 2. So I rewrite this again as 2 plus square root of 2 divided by 2. Now this whole numerator is divided by 2 so I'm going to skip a step here instead of writing this as divided by 2 I'm going to multiply by 1 half. What this allows me to do is simplify the fraction in the next step because what I have under the radical now is 2 plus square root of 2 divided by 4. Which means that since I can break the numerator and denominator into separate square roots, the numerator is 2 plus the square root of 2 all under the square root, and the denominator is going to be the square root of 4, also known as 2. So there's my answer for the exact value for cosine of 22 and a half degrees. So in problem number eight, what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this into a degree measurement. And I'm going to see if this is on the unit circle. Now, I know it's not going to be. We're going to have to use a half angle formula for it. But if I convert this, I will multiply by 180 degree or 180 divided by pi. The pi simplify and 9 times 180 divided by 8 is going to be the tangent of 202.5 degrees. Now what's important about this is that it tells us where we are on the unit circle. We're between 180 degrees and 270 degrees, so we're in quadrant 3. And again, this is important for us since we're going to need this information if we happen to use a formula that has a plus or minus. Now, one of the common formulas that people use uh, for the half angle formula is the plus or minus square root of 1 plus cosine theta over 1 minus cosine theta. Um, wait a second. 
think I got those backwards. It's one minus cosine theta over one plus cosine theta. But I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use an equivalent expression. So what I'm going to do is double this number here, which gives me um, boop, boop, 405 degrees divided by 2. And since this is a longer than one cycle around the unit circle, I subtract the 405 from 360. And what I have then is the tangent of 45 degrees divided by 2. So when I choose my formula, and again, I say many people use the formula of um, one, uh, the square plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine theta over 1 plus cosine theta. I prefer this formula. I prefer that the tangent of theta divided by 2 is equal to the sine of theta divided by 1 plus cosine of theta. There's another equivalent expression to this as well, but this is the one that I chose for the problem. So let's plug in our sine of theta. In this case, theta is 45 degrees, so this becomes square root of 2 over 2. That's in the numerator. And in the denominator, I've got 1 plus cosine theta, so this is 1 plus square root of 2 over 2. I'm going to get common denominators in the denominator, so I'm going to turn this 1 into 2 over 2. So now I have 2 plus square root of 2 over 2. Now, dividing fractions, I've got a complex fraction here, so I'm going to take this fraction and divide it by the fraction below it. But dividing fractions, um, I don't like to do that, so I like to skip, flip, and multiply. So I'm going to take um, this uh, numerator here and multiply it by the denominator, which is going to be 2 over 2 plus square root of 2. Now using cross-canceling or cross-simplification, 2 divided by 2 is 1. So what I have left here is, for my problem, the square root of 2 over 2 plus square root of 2. Now you'll see that this problem isn't, actually this isn't the answer in the back of the book because, well, we can't leave a square root in the denominator. So we're going to multiply by a giant 1, and we've been doing these in several problems here. So we're going to write 2 minus square root of 2, 2 minus square root of 2. And so we foil, in the, or sorry, distribute in the numerator, so it becomes um, 2 square roots of 2 minus square roots of 4 all over. We foil the denominator, so this is going to become 4 minus 2 square roots of 2 plus 2 square roots of 2 minus square root of 4. This is going to simplify my numerator. Um, the square root of 4 is 2, so I'm just going to write the negative 2 in front plus 2 square roots of 2. And I write it in that fashion because of um, the format of a plus bi, rational, irrational, imaginary. We don't have any imaginaries in this problem, but that's the correct format. Down below, I've got these two problems simplify. 4 minus the square root of 4 is 4 minus 2, so that gives me an answer of 2. Since these two terms have a 2 in it, I can divide each of these by 2, so my answer is negative 1 plus square root of 2. So there's my answer for that problem. Finding the tangent of 9 pi over 8, which was the tangent of 202.5 degrees. And since I used a formula that was not dependent on which quadrant I was in, I didn't have to use that information. But it's still nice because in the next four problems, we will be continuing to use this pattern. So let's take a look at problem number 9. OK. So the first thing I'm going to do here, uh, looks like I'm in degree mode, so I don't need to convert into degrees. Um, I'm going to figure out what quadrant I'm in. I'm in the third quadrant. And I'm in the third quadrant because I have um, over 180 degrees and less than 270 degrees. Now that's important because my formula is going to have me pick a plus or minus because this is a sine. And I'm going to change this into a half angle formula by doubling this number. So if I double that, this gives me 390 degrees divided by 2. So since 390 degrees is greater than one revolution, the equivalent, um, the equivalent period would then be 360 degrees fewer than that, so 30 degrees. So the sine of 30 degrees, I'm going to look up that 30 degrees, and um, the formula for that is going to be the square root of 1 minus cosine theta, and again the theta will be looking up the 30 degree sine value, 
uh, divided by, or 30 degree cosine value divided by 2. Now, if I do so, this gives me, uh, I'm going to kind of write up here just to take less room. Um, it's going to be the square root of 1 minus 3, uh, sorry, square root of 3 over 2 divided by 2. Now I'm going to get a common denominator in my numerator by turning that 1 into 2 over 2. Sorry, that's a little bad there. And therefore, that's going to give me the square root of 2 minus square root of 3 all over 2. Now this division of 2 is still there, and we could write that as dividing by 2, but I'm going to multiply by 1 half instead. What this will then give me is the 2 minus square root of 3 divided by 4, which I can split the top and bottom up and then and write 2 minus square root of 3 over 2. Now there's one thing I left out in this problem because the formula is a plus or a minus. And I have to choose correctly. And since the sine of 195 is in the third quadrant, I would choose negative for all of these. So my answer is going to be a negative square root of 2 minus square root of 3 over 2. All right. The next thing I'm going to do here is I am going to convert this problem, before I figure out what quadrant I'm in, I'm going to convert this problem into degrees. So I'm going to multiply by 180 divided by pi to convert, do my degree or radian to degree conversion. 7 times 180, using a calculator here, 7 times 180, divided by 8, this gives me an answer, the cosecant of 157.5 degrees. And again, I'm going to be in quadrant, or in this case, I'm going to be in quadrant uh, 2, because I'm going to be between 90, and I'm going to also be between uh, 180 degrees. So between 90 and 180 is quadrant 2. Now, what's interesting about this, you notice that this is the um, cosecant. Now, the cosecant um, is the reciprocal function of sine. So I'm going to be going ahead and using the sine equation, but I'm going to use it as kind of a reciprocal function, so it's going to be 1 over that until I get to the very end. Now, um, I'm going to change this equation since 157.5 isn't exactly on the unit circle anywhere. Um, I'll double this, so cosecant of 315 degrees divided by 2. Now what I'm going to do is look up 315 degrees on my unit circle, and that will give me excuse me here, um, that will give me the square root of 2 over 2 for this. Now, please understand that I am still in, um, I'm still in uh, degree mode here, so, um, and I'm also still dealing with cosecant. So at this moment, I'm going to take the chance to turn this problem into a reciprocal problem. So it's going to be 1 over the sine of 315 degrees divided by 2. So what that means is that my equation is going to be 1 over, and here's my, uh, cos here's my uh, half angle formula for the sine of 315 degrees divided by 2, is going to be plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine theta divided by 2. Now, since we're in the second quadrant, Cosine is the x value, and cosine in the x value, or sorry, sine, I'm sorry, sorry about this here, the reciprocal value of cosine is sine, and sine in the second quadrant is positive, because sine is my y value, and y values in the second quadrant are positive, so we're going to use the positive square root here, which makes things a little nice. So this is going to be equal to 1 over the square root, 1 minus, now cosine theta, um, again, we're looking up at cosine of 315 degrees, which is going to be square root of 2 over 2, all over 2. Now I'm going to get a common denominator here by making this 2 over 2. So I've got 1 over the square root of 2 minus square root of 2 divided by 2. But also notice that this is divided by 2, so I'm going to multiply by 1 half. So this gives me, I'm going to kind of rewrite this at the start here. This gives me 1 over the square root of 2 minus square root of 2 
divided by 4. Well, I'm sorry, square root of 4, which then I can rewrite as 1 over square root of 2 minus square root of 2 divided by 2. Now, <laughs> the next step is to rewrite this using a reciprocal. Now, since this is 1 over this, I can skip flip multiply is one way to do this. Um, but essentially, if you um, th what this is going to do to the denominator is flip it to the numerator. Um, so your answer is going to be 2 over the square root of ac or 2 minus square root of 2. But if you really want to see this out, this is an equivalent expression to 1 times 2 over um, the square root of 2 minus square root of 2. Now, the book will go one step further here, but I'm feeling like this is enough for us to do right now to, instead of rationalizing a denominator with a complex rational. So for our final problem here, we are going to uh, look at the cosine of negative 3 pi over 8. And again, first thing I would do is turn this uh, into degrees. So I'm going to multiply this by 180 divided by pi. So 3 times 180 and divided by 8. And this gives me a negative rotation cosine of negative 67.5 degrees. Now, negative 67.5 degrees is, if you want to find its equivalent, um, you know, uh, complement angle going around the other direction of the circle, just subtract that from 360. And so this is equal to 292.5 degrees in uh, the counterclockwise rotation. This puts us firmly in quadrant 4. Now, since this is not on the unit circle, what I'm going to do is I'm going to double this angle. And by doubling the angle, I get an answer of the cosine of 585 degrees divided by 2. Now, 585 is well beyond the unit circle. So if I subtract from 360, um, now I get an equivalent angle of 225 degrees divided by 2. Now, 225 degrees on the unit circle for cosine is going to be square root of 2 over 2 because it's one of those beautiful 45 degree angles. Now, the 225 degrees is a negative square root of 2 over 2, so let's just rock the formula out right now, which is the plus or minus the square root of 1 plus cosine theta divided by 2. Now, are you going to choose plus or minus? You're going to choose uh, for cosine is x, and in the first quadrant, um, or sorry, the fourth quadrant, x is positive. So it's going to be the positive of this, and we're going to look up our cosine at 225 degrees, and that's negative square root of 2 over 2. So my problem becomes a square root of 1 minus square root of 2 over 2 divided by 2. And I'll change this into 2 over 2 instead of 1. So I get a common denominator in that numerator. So my numerator is 2 minus square root of 2 divided by 2. And then instead of dividing it by 2, I'm multiplying by 1 half because of this number down here. And so this gives me, as you now see many times this similar answer has occurred in these worksheets here, 2 minus square root of 2 over 4, which I can rewrite, skipping a step here, as 2 minus square root of 2 divided by 2 because the square root of 4 is 2. All right, now you're ready to do the homework in this section. Uh, please make sure to add the tangent of 2 theta and the tangent of theta over 2 to problems 7 through 17. So 7, 9, 11, 13, 15, and 17. I want you to add two more parts because that will be more similar to the test questions. All right, thank you for watching today.